Hey, traders. This is Scott Barkley at Triac Traders. So, um, you know, I talk to traders all the time, new experience, uh, and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, everybody's looking for a winning system. But uh, one of the things that most traders uh, fail to realize is that uh, there are some fatal flaws that come along with uh, trading. And so I thought I'd make this uh, series available to you to be real short uh, and sweet. And uh, they're the 12 common mistakes that traders make. Now, here's the deal. You could have a winning system. And if you don't master these mistakes, you could still lose, all right? So it's very, very important. I'll make them short and sweet, try to develop it. So uh, you want to hang around, check it out, and uh, let's take a look at this first lesson. Okay, traders, this is uh, the 12 common mistakes Forex traders make and how to fix them. I'm going to make these short little short lessons. But, uh, you know, I've had hundreds, literally thousands of contacts with new and very experienced traders. And it truly amazes me that trade after trade, the most common losing trader approach is the same. A trader who thinks the market is about to go up will usually say something like, I think the euro dollar is going up to X. Where do you think I should buy it? And my response is usually something like, well, how much are you risking on the trade? In other words, where are you going to get in, out if you're wrong? Often there is silence or perhaps a puzzled, huh? They never thought about being wrong. They never thought about where to put their stop. My next question, well, if it does go up, how and, well, how and where are you going to get out? And I often receive the same response. Better than 90% of Forex traders that I come in contact with have no trade plan. That means they do not know what to do if they're wrong, and they do not to do, know what to do if they're right. The large paper profit that they made often turns into a large loss because they didn't know where to get out. The most important move a Forex trader can make is to develop a trade plan before they enter the trade. So let's look at them. Right? So you've all heard plan the trade, trade the plan. Right? How do you do that? Right? Plan the trade is top-down analysis. You find the wide open space of 55 pips or more, starting on a 240 chart, working down to a 60, finally to a 10 minute where you enter. Find out where you can press your winner without exception. You need a minimum of three to one reward for risk. Where will you take the trade off if you're wrong? You've got to figure that out. If you've got those four things figured out, you might be able to execute the plan, all right? So do you know how and where you're gonna enter a trade, all right? Know how much money you're gonna risk on that trade. Know how and where you're gonna get out if you're wrong. Know how and where you're gonna take profits if you're right. How many pips you're gonna make if you're right. Do you have a protective stop loss in case the market does the unexpected? Have an approximate idea of when a market should meet your objective, when it should begin to make a move, and if it has not done so, get out. So we do top-down analysis. So we find the day chart top and bottom. Those are that basically is kind of like a soccer field where you got a goal on one end and a goal on the other. Somewhere in the middle is where you are playing right now. We start on a 240 market structure. Is it a trend? Is it a channel? Is it a range? What is it? The big boys, top tier one bankers, are the ones who uh, uh, develop the structure. Once the structure is built, uh, all the rest of the Forex traders in the world know what to do with it. I'm talking about professional Forex traders, not newbies. All right? You then go down to the 60 minute chart. Does that verify that? All right, because it could be totally opposite in, in that process. Let me give you an example here. All right, so you've got a uh, 240 chart going up, all right, and you got a 60 minute coming down. All right, so what are you going to do with that? Well, the prevailing uh, trend or the chan or channel, excuse me, whatever it is, is uh, what you're looking for. All right, so if the channel is up, Right there. If the channel is up and this is down, what should I do? I should wait and take the chain trade up. All right. So they could be totally opposite at the same time. All right. All right. So 
uh, clear that. All right. So once you've got that figured out, I know exactly what the currency is trying to do. All right. You enter on the 10 minute, not the five minute chart. Why the five minute? Because the five minute has the most false positives of any chart. And uh, the next chart up is a 15 minute. Well, the 15 minute is too late. So you need to be entering on a 10 minute chart. Well, yeah, but my MT4 doesn't have a 10 minute chart. No, it doesn't. The default is a five or a 15. Who's responsible for changing it to a 10 minute chart? The trader, all right? So you have a wide open space of 55 pips or more so you can press your winners. The secret to being successful in the Forex folks is not finding a winning trade. The secret to being successful is finding a winning trade and maximizing that opportunity. So you create a rule that says, unless I have a 55 pip um, or more uh, wide open space with very few barriers in it, I don't make that trade. All right. Another reason is because the big boys won't be there either because they can't make a trade for less than 55 pips. All right, so let's take a look at what three to one risk to reward is. So you can see in this little graphic here, if I'm using a, a three to one, okay, I'm looking, I'm going to risk 30 pips to make 100 pips, okay? All right, I can be profitable if I'm 30% correct. That stack the deck in your favor. Don't stack it against you, all right? You can see here, even a one to one, I'm going to risk 35 pips to make 35 pips, okay? Well, you don't break even until you're 50% correct, and you're not even profitable until you're 60% correct, all right? And if you're scalping for 5, 8, 10 pips, you got to be 90% correct for the rest of your trading career. Well, yeah, but I, I, I want to trade, man. I got five pips. Okay, yeah, you're a winner. You won the battle. You just lost the war. You now got to be right 90% of the time for the rest of your life. So where will you take the trade off if it's wrong? So let me go take a look at a trade that uh, uh, we're looking at right now. We we're looking at it this morning. Okay. And we did take this trade. All right. Now, this morning when we took this trade, all right, we had uh, a rollover on the MACD right here, right here. There it is. Okay. Roll over MACD. We have a, a trend uh, to the upside or actually a channel, I should say. So we've got a channel to the upside and uh, we've got a, um, uh, there's a channel and uh, MACD was telling us, Hey, we're going to make it a turn to go up. Okay. Now what has happened since then? Well, it only went up a little ways and now it's coming down. What should I do now? All right. Where should I take the trade off? If you break this bottom, you take the trade off and take the loss. That's all there is to it. You take the loss. You say, no, it's going to come back, man. It's going to come back. It may, but statistically, it's not. All right. So, do you want to lose uh, 40 pips here or do you want to lose 100 pips? All right. So, you take the trade off. Well, what if it turns and goes where I thought it was? Get back in. It's very simplistic. All right. So, know what invalidates the trade. And every trade is different. All right. You might be trading a bull flag or a bear flag. We're trading a flag in this point. Uh, you could be trading all kinds of different um, setups, but where is the trade invalidated? And the trader is responsible for taking that trade off. Right. So, the magic numbers for success are this, the 65% win ratio and 35 plus pips average pip capture. In order to get 35 pips average pip capture, you have to press your winners without exception. If you're trading for 5, 8, 10 pips, your average pip capture is going to be 5, 8, 10 pips. So you have to get the 35 pips. How do I know that's true? Well, Forex Broker helped us out here. Forex Broker did a, a, um, a um, you know, trading contest and, you know, one guy won it. And so uh, then at the end of the trade, uh, the contest, they went and looked at all the losing accounts who had traded in that account on that um, contest. All right. Now, what they found was that the losing accounts were right 64% of the time. They were right 64% of the time, but they all lost money. Why did they lose money? Because their average pip capture was 5.74 pips. Now, all the winning accounts, yes, there was one guy at the top of that, but all the winning accounts had a slightly better um, um, winning percentage at 70%, but they all made money because their average pip capture was 36.49 pips. All right. So that's what you got to get to. Until you get to that, you trade micros and uh, get your skill level up. That means you got to keep track of it. Oh, well, that, does that mean I got to do a trading journal? That's correct. All right. All right. So uh, there you go. Um, hopefully that helps you. Um,
and we'll get to the next lesson. And the next lesson is going to be not having margin management. We'll talk about margin management yet. All right. So you need to get this. You need to get this. You need to get this. Thank you.